<sighs> Welcome back and congratulations, Kenji. <laughs> Dude, uh, you guys missed it, but I, I missed my attack with Tassiger that one turn. Like, I, I was getting too excited. I was like, yes, I got him. And then I double clicked the Tassiger. And <laughs> it was going a little fast. I believe you. Chat caught it. Oh, God. I never believe chat when they say somebody missed lethal, though. So I'm just trained to, like, chat lethal isn't actually a thing. Every once I... in a while, though, they're right. Man, my, got... my, heart is like, my heart is like pounding. I had to play Tom and Owen, and, you know, it's. Lucky draws and I don't know. It was. It feels good. It feels good, bro. <laughs> no, it should. And you played it great. I mean, other than whatever. So you misclicked. That these things happen, especially when yeah, you get excited. Um, but I thought yeah, you played so it well. I had, like that one turn. I could have like commanded to kill Sarkin and make him discard his last card. But he has so much mana to just activate Tasker that whole time. If I do that right, and it's just Tasker versus Tasker, and I'm stuck on three. So I no, figured. Ron and I were thinking kill Sarkin, but I thought your line was just better than ours. I think your line was great that turn. Yeah, because it leaves him with just the top deck of, of whatever yeah, he has. No cards in hand. He gets one top deck, and if it doesn't answer your Tassiger, then you also do get to kill Sarkin. I thought that you, I thought you played that really well. Whew. What's our next match? And you, so your next match is next week. You owe me a deck list on Monday. I don't know if you're going to run it back or not, but. Uh, you are through. It's going to be... We don't know what the groups are yet. you got to submit a deck list before you know who the groups are. Going to be awesome. Now the hat, you're not going to stick with the hat? Enough of the, enough of the fish. I, uh, I <laughs> redeemed my misclick. Yeah, no, I don't think... I don't think that was all that fishy. All right, so the last match. It's Rally against Esper Dragons. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Gerard took down Luis. The question is, can he also take down Luxi Tian? You're not that interested. is a good question. Um, what are the, the deck lists again, both of them? Yeah, we can put the deck lists up. Uh, Luxi Tian's take on Rally is a little bit different from Luis's. He, uh, here's Gerard's Esper Dragon, so it's perfectly reasonable places. Okay, Luxi Tian. His deck has four Colostri Healer, where Luis has Catacomb Sift. Both of them ah. seem to like their choice better. Um, also, I think there's only three Nintuko Hosts in Lishi Tian's list. Um, he does have the Techie Bring to Light to hang it out there in the sorcery slot. There. Oh, based on what I saw from Gerard's game versus LSV. Now, I know LSV flooded out a few games, but yeah. I feel like uh, I feel like Gerard, after watching that last one, has got to be a little bit favored. But we'll see. Yeah, I mean, Gerard did win it, and, and not, both games did seem kind of lopsided. But if we go look at Gerard's list... I'm not sure that's how it's supposed to go. Like, you look at this Esper Dragons list, and it, it feels like Four Color Rally can just can play enough two-for-ones and sort of get stuff on the board where it doesn't care about sweepers, and you're playing this game plan of one-for-one -one removal spells against a deck that's playing a bunch of two-for-one creatures and then can get them all back from the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, draw is dependent, of course, but... Uh... You know, if uh, if Li Shi Tian gets some timely collected companies, Rally and Ancestors, you know, that's the nice thing. They're both instant, so you have the opportunity right. to cast one end of your opponent's turn and then potentially do another one on your main phase should Gerard have the uh, counter. Yeah, I actually thought part of what was going on there was that uh, Dragonlord Ochatai actually looked great for uh, Gerard against Luis. Because what no, happened he... was, if Luis had had enough time, it felt like he could have sort of maneuvered all these instants to sort of play his way through Gerard's permission, but... He didn't have all that much time because the Dragon Lords were hitting pretty fast. And he fell behind on cards because of all the Anticipate. So, sounds like our players are ready to go. Let's get down to the match. Let's find out if Esper Dragons really can beat two consecutive four-color rally decks and get Gerard into the Super League Championships. Or whether Li Shi Tian will keep calling in from Hong Kong. You know, it looks like both players have pretty nice starting hands. Li Shi Tian keeping a seven... Carter with uh, not only two lands for the Jace, but you know he has all the combo pieces effectively uh, as as far as the creatures go. And uh, Gerard's got you know a nice one as well. Yeah, and that's that's a turn two Jace on the play for Li Shi Tian, which is faster than Foul Tongue Invocation can hit it. So he's going to get at least a little bit of value out of that Jace. And even then, Gerard's got to start you know tapping out. Poor Gerard with the turn one duress with a whiff. That's Wait never a what miss. you want to see. 
Huh? I mean, it's nice to have the info, of course, and like you said, the foul tongue is a turn late behind Jace when he's on the play. Now, you know, one interesting thing is that this polluted delta, he has to get an, a basic with it if he mm -hmm. wants to play turn two Jace, which means he's basically a two-color deck until he draws more lands. Sure, but he's got to figure Jace, if it survives, is going to find him some extra cards, right? Dig deeper. Sure. And wow, the Silumgar scorn after uh, Gerard <laughs> played turn one Swamp, it got to hurt. Yeah, turn one Swamp to rest did not work out. I mean, it, totally the right play, but it did not. It was not the psychic play. Yeah, and this Jace is going to do some work. Looks like Li Shi Tian drew a flooded strand for the, uh, the second turn or third turn there. Let's go to Loot Town. Looking at his deck list. Um, <laughs> generally, these decks just lead with the Husk. That way, if they draw like a Liliana or something, he can uh, flip it immediately on the next turn. But I don't know. Maybe he wants to lead with something else. He's discarding a Husk, it looks like. Wow, yeah. he had two collected companies. He did. <laughs> I guess this also makes sense. He wants to get a green source if he can. Right. Yeah, kind of so he goes to last killer so that Flooded Tongue can go fetch a... comes in a play tap then. Yeah. And that sets him up for turn four collecting. Yes, it does. I guess you get a basic here so that your turn four fetch land can get a battle land on tap. I, I think it hasn't updated. I think that was the Flooded Strand that was uh, in the play now, or on the battlefield now. I think our hand cam is lagging a little bit for Li Shi Tian again. Yeah, sounds right. But he... Yeah, in that case, give me the green mana. Sure. Now he can always play the husk, sacrifice a creature, and then flip Jace if he wants to, if he doesn't draw another la uh, fetch land or something like that. Not sure if that's a good play, but... <laughs> All right, there we go. Hands updated. Looks like he drew Liliana for the turn. So now he's got a choice Pretty between good. Liliana, Cutthroat, Husk, or Loot first, depending on if he wants to flip the Jace. Yeah, I gotta put my uh, put my money on Lishi Tian right now. Looks like he's way up ahead. Gerard does have languishes in his main deck, doesn't he? He does. He has one languish and one crux in the main. Okay, so. Wow, he's going to tap out the Foul Tongue Invocation. Hilariously, this Foul Tongue Invocation actually lets Li Shi Tian flip the Jades. Mm -hmm. Yep. Also, this lets him, um, if he hits an untapped land, cast a Collected Company this turn. True. And he's going to get two draws at one. All right. What does Jace find? Again, the hand cams are a little bit laggy. We apologize for that, but... Looks like he discards his cutthroat. I don't see him land, uh, jamming down his fourth land, so... Oh, there it is. <laughs> right on cue. And yeah, just like uh, Luis and I were talking about earlier, Luis mentioned that you always just main phase the collective company if you can do so. Yeah, if you can resolve it, you want to resolve it. Jace probably not the best of hits, though. Yeah. Well, the nice thing about doing it main phase, too, is that you can sometimes hit, like, Liliana and Nantuko Husk and then immediately flip the Lily. Use your ability. Now what does Gerard have? He can... I mean, he can tap out for dig through time. Yeah, he doesn't have to tap out... Com oh, wait. Yeah, he has a flooded strand, so he doesn't have to tap out completely, but I don't think he can do much with one mana, right? Not... Like another oh. duress or something, nothing exciting. Yeah, he's. I guess he he's, can painful truths is it for three is the other thing he can do, but none of this feels like it's getting him back into the game. He needs to, what, look as threatening as possible. Like you leave up Silumgar scorn and you end up dig through time, and I guess he's got to find a sweeper. But it looks like, like he's just gonna leave up the scorn plus the dig. Again, the nice thing for Lee, though, he's, he doesn't have to run this collected company into the uh, the mana. He can just, you know, uptick his uh, Jace, attack for one, sure. pass turn. 
He draws the land. Hand cam updates shows us the one collected company, the Liliana and the Husk. Gerard's hand turning into an X Files ad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, it looks like he's looking up the deck lists. I believe that's what that is. Cutthroat gets in for one. And I assume we're just going to see uptick of Jace and pass the turn here. Yeah, Gerard's draw just didn't line up very well versus uh, Li Shi Tian's, who had double collected company. You got to pop off the dig through time here, right, if you're Gerard? Yes. This gives a chance for Lee to pop off his uh, collected company. Yes. Oh, now our Skype is gone? Just our images. I look, I look good in stripes anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you just respond to Dig with collected company, right? Well, he's going to let the dig resolve first so that Gerard doesn't know oh, sure. yeah, let what the collected decision. company is going to hit. So this is the make sure I have a stop set on my own end stuff. Yeah, correct. So it looks like an utter end, and I'm not sure what he got a second. All right, well, I'm not sure why he didn't pop off the collected company there. That's Maybe, I question. guess I guess he doesn't want to run into that wrath. Oh, sure. Yeah, he's worried about language. He's worried about crux of fate. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess it's just insurance, and he doesn't need to do anything here. Duress is, if, if Gerard could go duress into language, that would have been really nice, but. Uh, you have to find the language to do that. Exactly. Now this duress is going to prompt the collected company, but he then does get to counter it with Solgar Scorn. Seems good. Yep. The duress is going to swing and miss, so. Collect a company effectively two for one, Gerard. Just not the way it normally two for ones you. And Gerard, leave, Gerard is leaving out double blue for another Slumgar scorn, potentially at least threatening it. But uh, yeah, representing it. I mean, with Jace on seven, he can flashback collect a company twice because he has two in the graveyard. Indeed. And Lee with the backup Jace. I mean, if Gerard goes utter end, there's some new Jace to replace that one. Yeah, this is... <laughs> All right, looks like uh, Lee's restarting his MTGO. In the meantime, you get a big uh, <laughs> crop out of me. That wasn't you, that was Lee. Oh, that was... Oh. Staring Sorry, for some at reason, I thought it was me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to see if we can get the hand cam line back up. <laughs> Our hand cam has become a mouth cam. Is that what the chat is? Called? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. 
but he is calling in from Hong Kong, and that's not all that surprising if our uh, hand cam connection is a little flaky. Well, he said it was morning time for him, right? It's like, whatever, 9, 10 a.m.? I think it's early afternoon by now, but yeah. Well, while we're all struggling, it's... Exactly. 10.30 here. It was... What did Gerard say? He had to... Oh, he's playing right now even, right? And he's... Yeah, he's he's the East Coast guy. You don't yeah. have... Oh, gosh. You gotta, you gotta adopt, adopt the me and Marshall lifestyle. Streaming at midnight instead of... How, when did you start streaming this morning? It was pretty early. Me? Yeah, I started streaming like 7.30 this morning. <laughs> All right, we should just play the game. Even if we can't get the hand cam. So, where we are is game one. Gerard has kind of navigated the first half a dozen turns without getting destroyed, but Li Shitian has managed to stick a Jace, run it up to seven loyalty, He's got Nantuko, Husk, and Liliana in his hand. He's even got his hand cam back. Look at that. Hey, yeah. Look at that. All is well. And, yeah, this game feels like... I mean, if it goes much longer, Gerard's going to stick an Ojutai and start attacking. Yeah, Lee just doesn't have the pressure right now. He did. Okay, so he drew a Grim Harispex for the turn. That's going to allow some Nantuko, Husk shenanigans, potentially. But and with only five lands, he cannot cast both of the cards in his hand. He might just be tempted to collect a company flashback. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I know he's been uh, he's been slow playing those collector companies a little bit out of fear of a sweeper. Like he's worried about the languish and the uh, crux of fate that Gerard has. But at this point, he just has to go for it, right? Like his yeah, I mean, uh, a lot. I Gerard, think he just flashback collector company. Yeah, Gerard used the Silumgar's command on, or yeah, command on the uh, sorry, not command the scorn, scorn on the uh, last one. Well, so he's just going to run out the husk though. Which makes sense. I mean, you want to get you want to get your combo pieces out, I guess. Chase keeps ticking up. Gerard draws a chase of his own. Gonna lead with the painful truths, though. He's he's just digging for those those key components. Those are not what he's looking for. Land is fine, obviously, but uh, Clash of Wills is okay. I guess it's fine here. Looks like he's gonna lead with a chase, though. Yeah. And now he's down to one mana. So kind of a window for Li Shi Tian. Yeah, this this is the turn. If he has any combination of anything, he can. Uh, well, he can almost probably just kill Gerard here. Like Jace is probably going to end up blocking the husk. Sure. That, that might yeah, that might be what happens. an interesting line from Gerard to just like take down his shields. Gerard's not running any murderous cut, is he? Oh, that's a good question. Um, he does not have murderous cut on his list. Okay, and Lee probably knows that, so if you can find like a Sadisi's Faithful to bounce the uh, to bounce the Jace... All right. Oh, Zulaport Cutthroat is the lead. Double Zulaport is gross. That's so he's going to have to chump the Nantuko Husk here. In essence, Face well, up, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. yeah, get in there. Husk is just lethal by itself. Husk is in fact lethal by itself. It's plus eight from the Husk and two Zulaports for those four creatures getting sacrificed is uh, eight more. Actually, it'll be seven on the last Zulaport, right? Because he can't sack the... Uh... Sure, he had to eat the other Zulaport yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. Still 17 damage. So Jace is obliged to block Nantuko Husk here. Yeah, and even if Gerard draws a Wrath here, which is going to effectively tap him out, he's going he's gonna to lose a bunch of life, and Jace is still going to be able to uh, flashback that Collective Company. All right, Gerard figures out, yep, yep, Jace has to block Nantuko Husk. No choice about that. Now what? Lee just keeps ticking Jace up. Not that, to mention Jace is on ultimate level. <laughs> yeah, Jace has done nothing this game except tick up. It's kind of hilarious. 
And Gerard's got an utter end. He could, in theory, just dispatch it. But the board is lethal. That's the that Jason nine loyalty with those flashbacks. It's just the backup plan. And a second dragon lord Ojitai is not what he's looking for. Uh uh-uh. uh So what? He's either got to play. He's got to utter end the Ninjuko husk. It's either that or he has to chump block with Ojitai. Right. I think he has to take care of the husk. And then Lee sacrifices it in response. Gerard falls to 11. Lee draws a card. Lee draws a card and still has five damage of creatures on the battlefield. I mean, I can't exactly tell what's in his hand yet. Yeah, Gerard's Gerard... done. Gerard has seen enough. He's just like, no, if I'm going down this road, I'm, I'm just going to scoop things up. Let's go to game two. Let me sideboard. Gerard has just... I believe Gerard just gave us all an extra five minutes of sleep. I think that's what well, that was. The funny thing is we've seen almost no Rally of the Ancestors fully resolved. We've seen a few cast for sure, but none of them have fully resolved. The collected companies have been really the, the key component um, of these decks. And, you know, both both the, uh, the Rally decks that we saw have been running four of each, the Rally and the collected company. True. We'll see if... Uh, can't see if Gerard brought in or took out anything as of yet, but his yeah, sideboard his side has not actually moving. His sideboard has two more languish, two ultimate price, three surge, two radiant. Uh, radiant purge doesn't do anything here. The sweepers are good though, right? The two more languishes seem really good. There's yeah, there's a point where languish is really really good, and then it becomes awful. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think his game plan has to be. Sweep the board with Languish, and then counter all of the rallies. Yes. That has to be the game plan, right? Yeah. He just has to find answers to both the collected companies and the rallies. All right. Yeah, we may, we may need to reopen that game at Magic Online. Sometimes if the players haven't finished sideboarding yet, it doesn't kick over to the game. But we'll get there. I don't know that Li Shitian has any particular tech in his sideboard. I mean, he could mastery the unseen. Like, is that a thing you want to do in this matchup? I don't. I don't think so. <sighs> I, mean, I, I always see two mastery the unseen in the sideboard. It's usually there for this kind of a matchup. But I don't know how. Oh, I'm sorry. Is. I thought you were saying Gerard had them in his sideboard. I was going to say that. In his that didn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that makes total sense for Lee's side. Like, it's a it's a sticky threat. Uh, only what Ugin can can deal with that. Oh, other end potentially, sure. Yeah. Lee also has four duresses in his sideboard, which seems pretty nice here. That's gonna be that's gonna be really solid. All right, looks like the players are ready for game two here. Sweet. Lee Shitian is up a game. We we'll get our game score updated. Draws look reasonable. Gerard does have a language this time that he can build toward. Can't see the last card in Lee's hand, but he has a little. Looks like a little bit flooded. Just a Sidisi's faithful uh, husk. Oh, uh, collected company. Okay, that makes sense why he kept it. Ooh, Gerard though with the timely turn to Jace off the top. Yeah. Now in uh, Gerard's matchup versus LSV, it was the Jace that uh, really took over the game early, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, Gerard could kill Luis's Jace. Luis could not return the favor. Lee can only bounce the Jace before it gets too many cards in the graveyard, yeah, I, I guess. I don't think you throw away Sidisi's Faithful just to bounce a Jace. Okay. Looks like Lee Shi Tian's hand might be lagging a little bit. Sorry for that, but we can still see Gerard's grip. He's going to need to draw some more lands here, but with the Jace, of course, it's going to give him some more, more options for sure. Yeah, it shouldn't be that hard. Hobbs on Charm. I forgot what he had mm, That's not bad. Yeah. Two in the main. I don't think they're ever exile anything, right? Maybe a tapped Ojitai, but otherwise they're just going to be drawing cards. Wow, he is running out the CDC's Faithful. <laughs> All right, I like it.
I mean, that ends up drawing mana, right? Yeah, tap some more mana. This means he's not going to be able to hold up a counter for whatever turn three play Lee might have. Right. Hey, how much did you change that Dark Jess guy list that you won with? Uh, so I put two duresses. The, you started from put, the Pantheon list that Owen and John played, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So I, I just took their list. I took out like a Tassiger. I took out a Command or something. I, I'd have to look at that list off the top of my head. I remember just, adding two duresses, though. Oh, I took out Sarkin. Okay. For sure, yeah. Did you change the sideboard much? Uh, I added two Dragon Lord Silumgars, which I really like in the uh, the Heavy Planeswalker uh, meta, or any you know, just like stealing an Ugin, steal, stealing a Gideon especially, and then using the minus four instantly oh, just to get rid of it. Feels so good versus all of the green white decks. Uh, but I think mostly it stayed the same. There's not much other than that. Makes sense. Meanwhile, Lee did take that window of opportunity to resolve a name to Go Husk, but Gerard just quickly dispatched it with ultimate price. And has started looting with his chase. Double collected company, though, in uh, Lee Shi Tian's hand. And again, that's the role player that we've been seeing time and time again for these rally decks. <laughs> Let's see if Gerard can find something. Another dig through time, not exactly what he's looking for. Only two blue, blue sources, too. It's actually really good that he's not able to flip the Jace yet. I think he wants to keep <laughs> looting. Wow, is he going to discard Languish? Well, he can flash it back with the Jace later. That's that's true. Okay. I mean, it's either that you want to discard Dig Through Time. Like, I don't think you want to discard your Counterspell or the Dragon that turns your Force Spike into a Counterspell. No, I would just, I would just think about discarding the second Dig Through Time. But yeah, that's not crazy because, of course, you can flash back that later too. Mm -hmm. and that is ultimately what he decides to do. And he's just going to jam the Ojitai. Mmm. Look at that. Collected company here in response. Oh, yeah. Oh. Or not. <laughs> or end step. Right. So I wonder if he just uh, does the second collected company on his main phase now. Yeah, Languish is not nearly as scary, right? Mm hmm. Crux of Fate is pretty scary. The Crux of Fate is insanely terrifying. Yeah, that's a one of, though. And the Languish is now post sideboarding a three of. Did we, did we confirm that he sideboarded in all of the other languages? I don't know for sure, but I mean, from Lee's perspective, he doesn't know. He just knows sure. it could be three of. I believe that. <clears throat> so Grim Hair Specs, and I'm not sure if he hit anything else there. If he's there, he goes. Oh, so DC's faithful. All right. So again, you're gonna bounce the Jace. Wow. I mean, this was the only way in uh, Lee's deck to to quote unquote deal with the Jace, and he's done it twice now. <laughs> now eating up two mana of Gerard's is, is very relevant. He also got to draw a card off the Grim Harrispex triggering when the Faithful... Uh, yeah, and oh, by the way, that Jace was about to flip as well. Mm -hmm. yep. And now, yeah, you're right. Untap, main phase of Collected Company. Liliana and... Was it just Liliana? Oh, my. Looks like just Liliana. That was not as very good as far as... Collected companies go. Wow, Silumgar in the deck too. No six yeah. mana. I gotta think that this favors Gerard by quite a large margin here at this point. Again, that collected company that's showing up on the screen, I don't think is actually in Lee Shi Tian's hand anymore. I think he's just left with. Now, if you're Gerard, do you just take a land off this uh, off this anticipate slam Silumgar? Um, steal either one. Steal Lily. Steal Harris back. So you wouldn't want to steal Lily because you, you have no control if something else of yours dies, right? And then she would just flip and go back to Li Shi Tian's hand. Right. 
that would that's the only awkward part. I think taking the Grim Hair specs if he's going to take anything makes more sense. But I mean, he also he can also dig through time here, hold up Scorn yeah. still. There's... He did take a land. Okay, so he took a took a planes, which means he couldn't dig plus Scorn. So he replays Jace and leaves up his choice of digger Scorn. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It does. This Jace finally wants to flip for once. Uh, you know, this Ojitai can be Abzan charmed currently. At least targeted by it. Resolving is another matter. So if you Abzan charm the Ojitai, Gerard counters that. Yeah, he's, he's still just kind of pinched on blue. He can't dig through time. I guess the Jace is flipping, though. Yeah, Any and options. the is continuing to attack. Man, Gerard's going to take this game, isn't he? Uh, it definitely looks that way so far, but we've seen some <laughs> some rally decks rally back. C minus, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. The double hero specs can draw Lishi Tian a ton of cards. Yeah, no. what's what's the record for the longest uh, Super League time? Uh, I believe it's tonight. <laughs> I don't think we've ever had a five hour show before. We had some vintage shows that went a little over four hours, but I mean, if you count the pregame show, we're, we just were five hours and five minutes. I mean, part of it is that we did do six six games tonight. It felt like, well, because when we did those eight person brackets for the first standard Super League, we would just play play it in a couple stages, right? Mm -hmm. I figured ah, it only takes six matches to pick our two winners. We can just watch all. <laughs> Nobody told me standard was going to be this slow. Sweet matches, though. I'm okay with more magic. No, no, these, these awesome games so far. Again, I don't think you can top the the round one that you guys had, but your games with were with Owen were good. Or your games with were good too. Who did you play? You played Owen, and who did you play in the first round? Tom. Yeah, your games with Tom were good. But those weren't like grindy. It was just like you know we both eventually. Yeah, they were like dueling top decks. They were like yeah. a couple of other plays and a bunch of like dramatic top decks. They were more dramatic than. I don't know, strategic. Exactly. But don't sell yourself short. There were some <laughs> there were plenty of nice plays in there in addition. I will have to rewatch and see how badly you guys uh, <laughs> yell at me for making terrible plays. <clears throat> Dig through time from Gerard. Let's see what he hits. Again, Li Shi Tan's board is scary. The double hero specs and Liliana can certainly do some work, but well, it's only scary if he draws a Nantuko husk. Yes. And then he has to resolve it. Well, Gerard doesn't have a counter in his hand. That's why. Oh, I guess he has Clash. I'm sorry. I mean, he could also languish if he was really scared. It's always sad to languish away your Ojita, though. Yeah, and if he languished, man, Lee would draw so many cards. True. I'm and not sure. Did, uh, what did Jace target with the, the uptick? Uh, I can't tell. Must have been one of the. Can't see it on the. So he can clash for four, which would actually not be enough to counter an Intuko Husk. Okay. Yeah, Cutthroat wasn't a bad draw if that's what he drew, but again, he doesn't have that sacrifice outlet currently. Right. Cutthroat. You know, the more of these hits that uh, Gerard keeps taking, <laughs> the scarier it's just. Right? Yeah. He's going to ultimate price as a response before the cutthroat gets in play. Okay. Well, he has double ultimate price in hand, too, so. Kill both hair specs. Lee gets, what, one card out of that? Yeah, but then he also gets a flipped Lily, which can bring back something. Mm. Like, he could bring back the Faithful in that case, bounce the Ojitai since it's tapped now. That doesn't sound good for Gerard. Like, this is still a sticky situation. Does Lee win this race? Like, he outraces Ojitai right now, right? Yeah. and uh, Well, like, almost. It's 3, 6, 7 damage next turn if Jace goes up again targeting Lily. Sure. I guess it's all dependent on, uh, on the draw of Lee, but, yeah, you know. Right, right. But, I mean, if Lee can't kill any of his own creatures, Gerard currently wins this race by one point. 
Some <laughs> school board cutthroat resolves. Yeah. The Jace is actually going to save him. I mean, Lee needs a top deck, and Gerard can leave up Clash, Clash of Wills. Oh, yeah. does Lee have a card we don't know about? Oh, there's a second card. Oh, it was, there were two. Okay. <laughs> but this one you can Clash. Yes. And then the position so is still board, the same. It sure looks like Gerard attacks for five, drops Lee to three. He gets attacked back for seven after plussing his Jace, and then he attacks for the one with Oja Tide. I think Gerard needs it, to find another counter, though, right? Well, yes. 100% yes. Because, let's see. Can he... Finds Haven. No, I guess he... Okay, so he has ulti, he has double ultimate price in hand, right? I guess that so means he can... Like, takes damage and gives Lee a bunch of cards and flips yeah, Lil' Nana. Killing, killing a Harrispex, you know, is only going to make him lose one life as opposed to taking three damage. But you have to kill Lily first, right? Well, if you if you if you kill, kill, like what is what is Lily doing? Can, is there a husk in the graveyard that I can't see? Oh, there is a husk in the graveyard. Yes. Okay, all right, all right, I dig it. Utter end is a very good draw too. True. With no sacrifice outlets, yeah. That's also going to negate any card draw from the Harris Fast triggers. Right. The exile's huge, right? Exile means it doesn't flip Lily, doesn't draw a card. And doesn't trigger Cutthroat? It all depends on what this draw was here. We don't know. Seven damage. Owen would like to end some of that. All right, let's see what Gerard takes out here. So one Grim Harris picks down. Yeah. Looks like Lily was the target of the Jace uptick. That all makes sense. She does have lifelink after all. Oh, okay, Rarely looks well. like he didn't draw anything, so Gerard takes game number two. Lee blanked on his draw on his draw steps, so jeez, Gerard sending this to a game three. Is he gonna be able to beat this rally deck again? Yeah, it was that it was that turn five Ojitai that he just jammed down, you know, not worrying about anything that uh, Lee could have done. Even I think he was facing down a husk and uh something else. I can't quite quite recall, but that Ojitai just completely took over. Yeah, can't see the sideboard with Lee, unfortunately. Play the game for Luis the same way. Yeah. Sticking that Oja is pretty good. So I wonder if there's any changes that Gerard makes versus play and draw. Can't imagine there are too many changes he wants to make. Looks like the Clash is coming out. Yeah, it took out the Tassiger as well. Oh, I guess Clash, yeah, becomes a lot worse on the draw. Looks like an Ugin might be coming back in. Makes sense. Ugin exiling the Aristocrats, you know, permanents if they don't have a exile of, or a sacrifice effect is is backbreaking. Eh, it's their fault if they don't kill you before you get to eight, right? I guess so. Now we've got Gerard's cam cam frozen as well. Mm -hmm. Even our technology is tired. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're still tuning in or if you're just uh, tuning in now, this is the, the last round of the uh, Super League Championship last chance qualifiers. Last game of the last match. Last game of the last match even, yeah. We'll now, next so week? We'll play next five week, matches instead of six. Next week is standard again? Is that what you said? Yeah, standard. Okay. All right. What's your take on standard ads? I feel like this is kind of the first event after the Pro Tour, right? Yep. Interesting, like, three Just Guy decks, which I think people still feel like Just Guy's really good. Nobody was beaten down. Caught, you know, an Esper, two Espers, and then two Rally decks to go with the one Bant tokens. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't see any of the Atarka red decks. I, I know that's more of a early metagame call, but uh, still those we decks can... We didn't see any Abzan either, and that's just one of Rosor. That's true. That is very true. Um, I don't know. I only chose the, the Jeskai, Black Jeskai deck, because uh, or Dark Jeskai deck, because I was playtesting it so much online. It like it, like It's been doing really, really well. It's just super fun to play. Even even when you make a ton of mistakes, you know, you feel like you're still in the game. And um, 
don't know. We'll, we'll see how uh, GP Quebec is coming up this weekend. We'll yep. see if any of the uh, new standard decks will be brought to the fourth. Yeah, everybody's deck list for next week are due Monday, so they get to watch the GP. They don't get to know the groups, and then we'll uh, we'll see where the dust settles. Yeah. Everybody will play once on Monday. Oh, it is six matches next week, right? Yeah, we're doing the three groups of four thing. <laughs> so everybody plays it. It's six matches. I know what we've done to ourselves. This new right. stand. Magic Online does all the shuffling for us, thankfully. That helps. I'm surprised we didn't see any sweet uh, ramp decks, though. I wanted to see some decks with Ulamog and, you know, all of the ways to, to explosive vegetate him out. Or, ooh, Oblivion Sower. Man, that card is, that card is really, really nice. Um, a lot of the decks that I've been playing against online, running the Oblivion Sower, you know, because people are digging through time and they're exiling their own cards via Tassiger or Treasure Cruise or whatever. And so you play the Sower, you, even if you don't hit any lands off the top of their library, you still sometimes get a few from their uh, exile zone, and then you're able oh, sure. to, yeah, to, to play a, a fast Ugin, which Ugin, you know, is on cast. So you end <laughs> up exiling two permanents and just getting them. Have you tried the uh, the Ramp Dragons deck that, like, uh, Dan Ward had at the Pro Tour? A couple guys on the deck's army were running it. I had a, I had a red-green Ramp deck with Atarka and, like, Tromoka and Ugin, but it just wasn't faring very well, so I scrapped it and Decided to, yeah, uh, their version was just uh, the ramp mana creatures, and then just four colors, thunder breaks, and uh, uh, the blue one, the five mana guy that taps somebody down and makes it harder to target things. His name is escaping me right now. Five uh, mana tapped what? <laughs> it's three u u four three target creature doesn't. Untap. Oh, icefall regent, icefall regent. Good lord, it's getting late. Uh, icefall regent. Uh, I think it's not that late. I've just been talking about magic for five hours in a row. Um, but then they're like Savage Knuckle Blade Mantis Rider. So it's just like everything is all colored mana pips. But yeah, they run the they run the Beast Breaker Savant, the guy that's uh, haste and taps. Oh, the one one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I put that guy in on top of Rattle Claws, and just all the mana just kind of works. Yeah, a lot of those like Mantis Riders have haste. You can give the Savage Knuckle Blades haste. Icefall Regent is kind of like a weird haste because you can tap down where there are other things, you know? It's, eh, it makes sense. I don't know. I have fallen to the quote-unquote dark side, and I don't think I'm going back anytime soon, which is perfect for all the uh, the new Star Wars movies coming out, I guess. <sighs> this is uh, a long sideboarding process, hopefully. Well, what happened is that uh, Gerard's Magic Online did not let him sideboard. Oh. So restart the match and then just concede the game so that Jordan actually has a chance to sideboard. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. His uh that was our problem. What's on Lee's side? It's on Gerard's side. I want to make sure these guys have a I don't want to make Gerard play on sideboard, obviously. So we'll take a minute, we'll let Gerard sideboard. Um what needs to happen. Gerard should be on the draw, right? Uh yes, yeah. Gerard just won the last match, so Yep. Lee concedes, and then they play a game. Sounds like a plan. Now, the Aristocrats deck, or I guess the, the Rally deck, is only running uh, 23 lands with all those fetches, too. So, I mean, I know they can function off with only five, but it seems like we've seen that uh, that issue time and time again where they're not hitting their... Either they're double white, or they're not hitting their fifth or sixth land when they need it. Yeah, so I didn't get the chance to ask Lee this, or, or, or Luis. The... The Aristocrats decks that were making all the noise at the Pro Tour were actually the blue black list that Calcano and Team Doggy mm -hmm. was running. And then the black green list that Game of the Seaf was running. But then the two rally decks here are these just four color collected company decks. It's like a yeah, mis mis kind of mishmash of both worlds, you know? I mean, it seems actually, like. Do you really need to splash the white for rally? Do you even need the green for Collected Company? <laughs> the Collected Company, I think, is absolutely necessary. The Rally makes the mana awkward, for sure, because it's the only white card in the deck. And it's double white. Yes. Yeah, but, I'm, not, I mean, I'm not convinced the Rally of the Ancestors is actually worth it in those decks. Well, but against some decks, against some decks, the, the Rally just wins, right? Like versus uh, Dave Williams, you know, if he didn't have Dispel, it was basically just game over as soon as it resolved. Granted, you know, 
most of those games weren't uh, weren't decided by Rally the Ancestors, but it's always nice to have that potential plan. I don't know. Yeah, we may not have Gerard's hand cam. It sounds like his issue was actually internet based, not Magic Online based. Well, it's what two a.m. and his time, and he said he had to get up at six or something. <laughs> that is. Trooper. Those are all true things. I mean, I'm not sure he expected this to go this long. I think we're all, we're all a little bit tired, and we set the record, record-breaking Super League. He is now sideboarding, so they've got a game started. Lee conceded so that Gerard would be on the play, and that they would be on a sideboarded game. I don't know. Can we take a look at uh, Gerard's deck list one more time? I, I couldn't exactly see what he was sideboarding when he was uh, doing it the first time around. All right, so Certainly some options. Has a duress, has some ultimate prices, some languishes. What do you actually want for this matchup? Though? Well, he does have a Master of the Unseen of his own. Look at that. Oh, okay. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe that's what I saw. I, like... <laughs> I guess that's from more of the mirror matches or something, but... Yeah, I would think so. So we saw that he brought in mul multiple language, uh, languages for sure. He had at least two in the last game. Um, I don't think Surge of Righteousness is what you want versus that deck. They don't need to attack to win. Right. Duress and Disdainful Stroke both seem fine. All right. We are good to go. No hand cams, but... The final game of the final match of the final round of qualifying for the Super League Championships. Will it be Gerard Fabiano's Esper Dragons deck? Will it be Lee Shitian's Four Color Rally deck? Let's find out. <laughs> We've worn out the internet. We've worn out the players. Who needs We've hand worn games? out the commentators. Crowd, how's the crowd doing? Crowd seems a little tired, too. Not going to lie. All right, as we can see from the players' hands, they both kept rousing sevens. <laughs> Lee opening with a windswept heath into a prairie stream, it looks like. Okay, so he has one of his white sources already. Sure. Let's see if he has anything. Probably getting a swamp here, I would assume. Chase, maybe? Ooh, the healer. Are you sold on healer? I know yeah. he was talking to it about... Or I, I know he uh, was talking to it with you. He was defending it. I, Luis made a pretty compelling case to me for Catacomb Sifter in that spot. Like, both Catacomb Sifter, Sifter and Elish Visionary seem better there to me. Uh, I think uh, Gerard kept a one lander discarded Jace. What? Yeah. I mean, he did get a scry, right? Because he was on the draw. So, assuming he bought him something. Oh, no. Not like this. <laughs> Two in the morning. He's got to get up for work in four hours. It is Gerard, though. He's He's been known to keep some one-landers over the years. So I've heard, yeah, and then he's discarding again. Dig through time this time. Lee's just going to run him over without any necessary interaction, and did he looks hold, like. Did he hold a six, or did he keep seven? I'm pretty sure he kept a seven. I, I, I could be wrong, though. He's got seven cards in his hand. He's, he's drawn ten cards, and it's... He kept one land seven cards, didn't he? I believe so. It looks that way from the card count. Yeah, because he discarded on turn two. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. One land, Jace, on the draw. I assume multiple Jaces if he's discarding one. Fair. Fair. One land, multiple Jaces on the draw. Do you, do you keep Jace blue mana on the draw? Not when I have a scry if I mulligan to six. <laughs> right, yeah. No, I think on six you can keep that. You can totally keep that on six. I just don't think he can keep it on seven. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I assumed I said that he got a scry if he kept his seven, but that, that wasn't even true. Yeah, and yeah, no. Lee's just gonna run him over. Gerard already down to six, down to five. He's gonna die before he ever finds that second land, isn't he? Take two more. Oh, he did bring in Surge of Righteousness. Okay, well. Wow. Well, not the most exciting game of Magic. <laughs> But there you go. Li Shi Tian is victorious. He will join you in the Super League Championships. We'll also join a whole host of other players. It's a fun night. Yeah. Last game 
Magic was not exactly a highlight, but I don't know. It's always, I mean, mulligan decisions are interesting. There were some really interesting mulligan decisions in the copy of the Bird Tour last, last weekend, too. Some of which worked out, some of which didn't work out. No, I'm going to go back and watch the first match between Reed and Owen, man. That was so that was many awesome. interesting li lines and plays. It was, it was crazy. I agree. All right. Thanks for staying up late. Thanks for hanging out with us, Kenji. Thank you guys for hanging out with us out there in the chat. Come back, same time, same place next week. There's our final bracket. We will have 12 more players taking their shot at this cool new standard format. Come back then. See you soon. Good night, guys.